All right. Uh, before I get started, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jason Lacey. I'm a deacon here at Senior Church of Christ, and, I, and I'll say again, it's just so great to see all the family and friends here in support uh, of our uh, loved ones uh, that we're going to baptize today. And, I, you know, I want to say something to Dylan as well. You saw Dylan get up here. Dylan is a, uh, has already been baptized, um, and uh, this was his kind of first little uh, foray into uh, service, you know, in worship up front. <laughs> And it reminded me of an old uh, Jerry Seinfeld uh, joke that he used to say, and and it kind of went like this. He said, you know, when you poll people about their biggest fears in life, the number one fear was public speaking. The number two fear is death. He's like, so if you're at a funeral, you'd rather be in the casket than getting the eulogy. Right? So... Dylan, not something very easy to do. I thought you crushed it. And, uh, you know, thanks for taking the, the uh, courage as a young man to get up here and serve the Lord. It's uh, well done. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's Baptism Sunday. Is this where you clap? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, some of you, like me, are, are excited. I've been excited for this all week. And, and still others of you are out there and you're like, yeah. I don't know what that means, but I'm excited we're all here. Let's do this. Uh, And that's okay, too. But uh, uh, we'll get to the important part here in a minute. I I promise I'll try not to stay up here too long. Uh, But I want to answer a a question for everybody today about why uh, this is a thing and why it's a thing worth celebrating. Like, what is baptism exactly? If it's a symbol... Symbols only have meaning if you understand what they represent. And if you don't, they're confusing to watch and you're just not sure what we're doing. But if you understand what the symbol means, suddenly you can grab its meaning and it not only becomes meaningful to you, it becomes meaningful to everyone around you. That's interesting that if you look in the New Testament in the Bible, right, It stretches its arms out wide and it wraps in a bunch of different pictures and images and metaphors to help us understand what's happening when we do this sacrament. Now, sacrament, that's a big word, right? We call baptism a sacrament or a sacred moment or a holy moment or as we would just say today in normal English, right? It's an important thing. So many of us understand it's important, right? We're all here, right? Everybody showed up to to witness it. So we know it's important, but even longtime Christians are not always fully sure of what's going on with this. And the Bible uses a bunch of different images. So today we're going to look at just a few of the things that the Bible uses to help us understand baptism so that we can enjoy this with Jaden and Bo and Drew. And then we can think about it in terms of what it means for our own walk in life. Now, one of the first things that the Bible grabs in 1 Peter, make sure I got the clicker, got to turn the clicker on here. The first thing that the the Bible grabs here is this image of our rescue from condemnation, right? First Peter talks about it, and he talks about it in terms of Noah, right? You remember Noah, the guy that saved all the animals from the flood and and his family was saved. But it says in 1 Peter 3.20, it says, To those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built, In it, only a few people, eight in all, they were saved through water. And this water represents baptism. And that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from your body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven, and he's at the right hand of God, with angels and authorities and powers and submission to him. Now, the picture that the Bible paints here, ladies and gentlemen, is this picture of God and that that our God is a just God. And just like in Noah's day, that water, that flood, was God saying, I'm just, 
And when I see evil, it's got to be dealt with. It's got to be dealt with. But is there a way for God to condemn evil but rescue the people that have done that evil? All of us, ladies and gentlemen, every one of us are created in God's own image and we are beautiful in God's eyes, but we're broken because of the sin that's in our lives. Every single one of us, including the guy giving the, the, the lesson today. But can God be a just and also a justifier? In Noah's day, God said, heck yeah, I'm going to bring this flood on the earth to judge evil, but I'm going to create an ark. For those that will trust me and that will step into it. Now, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, an ark is not a boat, right? We always grew up thinking it was a boat. This is not something that Noah's got the kids in and he's steering through the storm. Look out! <laughs> this is a box. It can literally be translated in the Bible as a coffin. This is just... Noah saying, this is the means that God provided. Maybe he's going to come through. And he steps in and does what God asks. And God does come through. Amen. So the part of baptism, ladies and gentlemen, today that some of our young ones are going through and that all before them have gone through is this acknowledgement that, hey, I am part of a humanity that is a mess because of sin. I've done some things personally that God justly condemns and yet I'm acknowledging today that God has made a way to rescue me so I'm saying that through though I deserve condemnation I've got grace thank you God for burying my past thank you for forgiving me it's a symbol ladies and gentlemen of what needs to be buried in the past now it's not only a symbol of our removal from condemnation, it's a symbol of transformation. A symbol that the old is gone and the new is coming. Colossians 2 says, having been buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Now that's saying, not only am I rescued from condemnation, but there are also some things that I got buried. I left it in that water. There's some things in my past that needed to go away. Ways of thinking, ways of living, ways of treating other people. Right? Those are things that are part of my old life. I'm going to let those go. Any history buffs in the room? Got a couple in the front here, one in the back, right? Anybody know who Sam Houston was? Dylan, the resident history. Oh, I got one. Somebody from Pepperdine knows. They, they figure if they didn't raise their hand, somebody might say, what's going on in Pepperdine? But Sam Houston, I'm a Texas guy. My family's from Texas originally. And you got to know your Texas history. And Sam Houston, uh, big claim to fame. He won uh, the Battle of San Jacinto against Mexican General Santa Ana, basically declaring independence for Texas. He became, he was the first president of Texas, he was a senator, he was a, a governor of Texas, but little known fact about Sam Houston, ladies and gentlemen, horrible guy, <laughs> terrible man, the chief of sinners, as he would say. And later in his life, he was baptized in a place called Rocky Creek, and they told him, Sam Houston, your sins are washed away. To which Sam Houston replied, God help the fish. <laughs> right, Sam Houston understood that there's a lot in my past that needs to get buried. This is part of the acknowledgement of this act that you're going to see today. It's our way of saying, hey, I'm not pure and clean. I do, I've done a lot of broken things. I've done some sad things and things I regret. But God's made a way out for me, and I said yes. I no longer need to pretend these things are not in my life. I no longer need to hide them and feel ashamed of them. I can bring them to the surface and work on them. I'm going to acknowledge that God made a way out of them, and that way is through God's redemptive plan in Jesus Christ. 
It's the declaration of the world that I'm going to go with Jesus. But like marriage, right? If you're married, you're going to get married. You don't need a wedding. You don't need a wedding to get married. You go down to the justice of the peace, you sign a piece of paper, and you're married. But the wedding, it's a sacred moment because you're declaring to the world, I'm going with him. Or I'm going to go with her. That's what this is saying. It's saying, I'm going to go away from what I was, and I'm going to go toward him. It's transformation that Romans chapter 6 captures brilliantly. It says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live in newness of life. But that's not where this ends, ladies and gentlemen. This is also a reminder of our association. It's not only transformative, it associates us, it enters us into the new community of God. We have been clothed, literally clothed in Christ, the Bible says. Galatians 3 says, For all who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ, there was neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for all are one in Jesus Christ. Now what is he talking about here? When I was a college man, ladies and gentlemen, I spent four years living in a fraternity house. It was equal parts disgusting and fun. The eight men in the house shared a tiny bathroom with a tin shower in the corner. At some point, probably during some festivities, the hot water knob was either stolen or broken off of the shower. Did we fix it? No. We just took cold showers from then on out. It should also be noted that the, the heat in this house was terrible. So on a winter day, taking a shower and stepping out of it was a tricky proposition. If you stepped out of it and your towel was still on the hook, you knew it was going to be a good day. I would run upstairs freezing, and I'll never forget, ladies and gentlemen, the warmth that I felt putting on those new clothes. That wrapping, that, that heat, that sense of protection. That's what he's saying. He's saying once you go through that, that when you step out on the other side, you're not wrapped up in past failures, your old haunts that some of your friends and your family and your neighbors might want to remind you about. You're wrapped up in something else. What defines me now, what defines us now, is who he is. The first thing that people know about me and see about me is who he is. Not because we've earned it or I've done so well or I've cleaned up my life so perfectly. None of that. It's due to none of that. It's due to him being that great. I've got a new community that I'm not just baptized into association with Jesus. I'm baptized into association with his family throughout time and across the globe. And when you get married, right, you don't just knit together with that person, right? You get a whole new family for better or for worse. I see a couple of faces in here. Many of you are thinking, mostly worse. <laughs> Still others of you I see are like, no, I love every family member that I've married into. And in that case, you're the family member. <laughs> but that's the amazing part about this. The good, the bad, the ugly. I love what the Bible tells us. It tells us that we are all knit together with a bigger family and a bigger community. 1 Corinthians 12 says it like this. Just as there is one body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form the one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given that one spirit to drink. So even though the body, like us in this room, are made up of many different parts, the body is in Christ. 
Now the final thing I want to kind of talk to you about today is baptism, it's a commandment. It's interesting that God also commands us to be baptized. Now, this is where you wade into that weird part of like, does baptism save you? I'm here to tell you, I don't believe that baptism is the saving. Faith in Jesus Christ saves you. Baptism is that declaration of that association. But it's interesting that in Acts chapter 10, Peter is talking and he says, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He's looking at people. He's been called into this household, a secular household in this story. This guy was a Roman. He was a well-to-do Roman citizen. But he was a good man and he was a believer and he had people underneath him that he helped to be believers. And Peter is sitting there and he's saying, these guys are awesome. They are doing what we're doing. They are saved. And he saw it and he said, so they converted before they were baptized. And afterwards he said, I command you to be baptized. Basically, ladies and gentlemen, God withholds the right to say, because I said so. If you're a parent in the room, you definitely have uttered these words. Certainly in my household we have. And I get so many people that ask me, right, why get baptized if I'm already saved? I'm already saved. If it doesn't do anything, and this is just a symbol to everybody, I choose to pass on the symbol. I don't like getting wet. I've never been a fan of pools. Being in a bathing suit in front of 100 people is a non-starter for me. But the Bible commands us to do it. And sometimes, right, ladies and gentlemen, as a parent, you reserve the right to say, because I said so. Because you understand, as the parent, I'm trying to get my kid to do something that they don't really fully understand the significance of. But if I can get them to do it, they will understand the significance later in a way that I can't really express in words right now. I've seen a number of people, ladies and gentlemen, baptized like this and in the ocean and in rivers and church camps and all kinds of places. I've seen a lot of it. And for many people, this public declaration in front of everybody, that the, wor the, the, the public declaration to all of you has such a profound impact on them, that the physical act of going under and up in front of their peers and saying, I'm going with him, was so powerful for them, ladies and gentlemen, that they would burst into tears, right? In that moment, they realize, oh, that's why God commands it. Because God knows us. God knows that it's the physical, it's tied to the emotional, it's tied to the spiritual. So that's why we're here today, ladies and gentlemen. When we enter that water, we know that Jesus is standing next to us. The Spirit of God, He has come down and He is in us. And we believe that the Father, God in heaven, is speaking the same words to us. that will be speaking the same words to Bo and Drew and Jaden here in a minute. That same words that He said to Jesus, This is my Son with whom I am well pleased. When we step into this water in a minute... The triune God is wrapping around us and he's saying, this one is mine. That's my girl. That's my boy. That one's mine. And when we step out of this water, ladies and gentlemen, our job, right? They're going to be clothed in Christ. They're going to be a new creation living a new life. And the people of Jesus should be waiting on the other side to throw a party. That's our job. That's why it's so powerful for, to see all of the family members here today. Thank you for coming here today. You could have very easily had them come and tell you about it later. You could have very easily watched it on YouTube in a little while. But you committed to coming here and celebrating with them. And that is the power of community in God's kingdom.
We've got a brother now. We've got a sister now. We've got a celebration now, ladies and gentlemen. Look what God did for you. Look what God did for me. Look what God did for us. Look what he's going to do in us. That's the party that we're about to have. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's get on to the celebration. All right? Uh, before we do, uh, I want to do a little housekeeping. So we're going to call up uh, uh, each of the young people that are going to get baptized. I'm going to say a few words about them while they're up here. We're going to take their confession here. And then uh, for, for the three of you, we've got some rooms prepped for you. You already know where you're supposed to go. Stage left here. Uh, if, if there's somebody that wants to help them prep or whatever, uh, you're welcome to accompany them. Uh, we have kind of uh, the, the guy's side dressing rooms and the girl's side. So uh, you guys handle that as, as you need. And uh, once we've gotten your confession out here, uh, we'll go in the back and we'll baptize you and then we'll come out and then we'll end the service today uh, with a prayer uh, with all the families and, and, and everybody up here uh, to welcome them in. So as we begin, if Jaden, if you could come up, come on up, Jaden Alexander, everybody. So uh, I, many of you know Jaden. Uh, Jaden is uh, like a second daughter to me. Uh, sometimes, depending on the day, I wish she was the first daughter. <laughs> Especially if Lauren hasn't had a, like a cheeseburger in a few hours. Um, but uh, but Jaden is a junior at Royal High School. Uh, Jaden, uh, her family's all over here to the left. Uh, we we've become over the years very close with. Uh, uh, Jamie and Danny and their entire extended family. They're just such a wonderful uh, group of people, all their family and friends. And when we moved here years ago, they adopted the Lacey family. And we got to go to all kinds of things with them. And uh, so we got to know not only Jaden, but just the love and the care and the uh, commitment that this family ha has uh, for the Lord and that they've uh, fostered in her. And it's like amazing to see her now as a young woman uh, crushing it. But uh, she's uh, what you see on the, the screen there, I took the liberty, right, I, I do a lot of classes and things with them, and uh, I took the liberty of trying to throw out what their Christian superpower is at this point, and you see Jaden as a kind supporter. Uh, I think that you, uh, as I've witnessed you, you're, you are always there to give somebody a word of encouragement. You are always there. Uh, you are an inclusive person that tries to involve everybody. Uh, when somebody's down, you're looking there to find them and pick them up. And uh, that is the work that Jesus uh, asked us to do. Uh, she's not the most out front, like gregarious person in a crowd like this. She's probably, when are you going to get me off the stage? <laughs> but she is a one-on-one -on -one people person that you just feel the love from. And I know she's going to be powerful in God's kingdom for years to come. And uh, we're so excited for you to, to be baptized today. So with that, Jaden, I'll take your confession. Uh, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins and for the gift of the Holy Spirit so that you may have a new life? Yes. I do. And with that confession, let's get you baptized. All right. Drew Watkins, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up. All right. Come over here. Uh, Drew Watkins, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Drew is also a senior at Royal High School. Oh yeah, yeah. Here we go. That's a, you know that's that's why we get married, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Gentle pushing. Uh, Drew Watkins, a senior at Royal High School. Um, this guy is also you'll start to see a theme from these folks. This guy's also a standout athlete. Um, really a different athlete than some of the other uh, folks in our group because. Uh, Drew doesn't even really have to try that hard, and he's just kind of good at everything. Um, so it's kind of fun to watch. Um, but I think as I look at Drew, uh, you could say some of the same things about Drew that you said about Jane, just this, this quiet, kind heart. But I think more than that, Drew's really a seeking servant of people. He's a thinker, right? I think he's probably the only one in this squad now that Luke's Ar Luke Arnold and some of them may be a little bit different but in our squad at Royal he's probably the only one that legitimately actually does his homework <laughs> a 
all these guys say they do their homework. It gets done somehow, but Drew's actually studying. Even for this thing, he called me a week or two ago and said, hey, I'm getting baptized. I need some verses. I need to know what's going on here. I need to study up. And uh, so I, I know that this guy is going to have a deep heart for the, the word of, of God, and I know he's going to try to understand, and he's going to try to help other people understand. And in addition to that, uh, he's a guy that loves and cares and is supportive of people. He comes from a long line of hospitable, loving folks. The Watkins family uh, takes care of, I think, everybody at Royal all the time. Uh, and so I think they have taught him that way of, hey, service to people matters. And so, uh, Drew, I've been really excited to see you grow and uh, to, to really become, like, really a, a strong man in the Lord and, and just a great friend and a great supporter to everybody around you. So, uh, with that, let's take your confession. Drew, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins and for the gift of the Holy Spirit, and so you may walk in a newness of life? I do. All right. Let's All right. get your God back. All right, come on up here. Ladies and gentlemen, Devon Bowyer. All right. Okay, also, slide. I haven't started yet. All right. Um, all right. Bo, also a senior at Royal High School, also the most dapper of the group, as you can tell. We got the red suit on today, got the blue suit in the photo. I mean, we're trying to, it's Bo's world, we're living in it. Um, Bo's a stud athlete. Uh, I encourage you, if you've not been to a football game, you might want to go to one. Um, uh, this Friday, two picks and a touchdown, almost two touchdowns. I mean, and this guy uh, is, is all over the place. Bo's also a rapper. <laughs> Goes by the name of D Flow. Uh, you know? Yeah, wrong, wrong uh, uh, on iTunes now. I want some royalties from that, by the way. Um, but if, if Bo could be a figure, if I could connect Bo with a figure in the Bible, right, it would be Peter. Peter was a confident and brash figure in the Bible, right? He wanted to be the best in Christ, he wanted to go and do. And sometimes that confidence and that out frontness would get the best of him. He'd get over his skis a little bit, but God would always like just bring him back to center. And then he was a warrior for Christ in Acts. He was a guy that just by his mere presence and his ability to be out in front of people and for people to just be some reason drawn to him, people came to God, right? And that's Bo. That's Bo through and through, right? And uh, I know, Bo, that you are going to be uh, similarly to Peter. You're going to use all this talent and all this confidence and all the affability that you have to really be that confident warrior in Christ, right? You're, you're a guy that can get out in front and, and get people to do stuff. And so uh, I'm proud of everything and the commitment that I've seen from you. Bo's also the guy that if we've been gone a couple of weekends and we're back and, you know, he calls us, hey, dude, are we going to church or what? And so Bo, Bo is, is that warrior for Christ that I can't wait to see uh, what you do in the future, brother. All right, let's uh, take your confession. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bo, uh, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins, for the gift of the Holy Spirit and the new life? I do. With that confession, let's get you baptized. <laughs> All right, James, if I can call you up, we'll go get everybody ready. Uh, give us maybe like five, seven minutes, folks. We'll sing a few songs, and then uh, we're going to open this screen so everybody can see. Some of our young folks and our families, when you're, uh, I know we might want to get it on camera and, and that kind of thing. If you want to come up and kind of hug the sides, if you can, if you want to see closer, you're welcome to kind of come here. If you can kind of keep the middle open so the rest of the group can share, that would be fantastic. Yeah, we'll get that. We'll get that stuff out of the way for you. And then um, one th one other announcement: uh, we, we will also be videotaping this. Uh, we'll have it cut and actually on the, the church's YouTube page. So if you need a video of it later, uh, that will be there uh, available for you when you're ready. Well, thank you so much. They're getting down in here. I just want to say, lastly, if any of you are not baptized and it's interesting to you, and you want to know more about it, you want to learn about it, you want to talk to any one of us, we'd be more than happy. 
to sit down with you and talk to you about the importance and significance of it and how it might be important in your life. We don't have to wait for another baptism Sunday. We can do it right away. Thank you all for uh, being with us. I'm getting out of the way. not on Instagram now. Okay, so. Oh, uh, you can if you want. Yeah, okay. If, why don't you, like, well, we'll have you sit down. Just stay right here. All right, uh, Jaden, uh, we love you so much, and uh, I know your family loves you, and, and we know that, that God and Jesus loves you, and because of your amazing faith and, and your admission, and confession that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. I'm, I'm so pleased to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of your sins and for the gift of a new life. pleasure to see you grow in the Lord and to see your commitment uh, not only uh, to God and your faith but to those spreading the love of Jesus and that that what would Jesus do kind of attitude to everybody else you are a, a true warrior for Christ and um, just excited to see you get baptized today um, like this. Drew yeah we'll sit down to, this is what happens when you do a six foot, what, three or four guy. It's gonna, we're, 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 gonna, we're gonna ease into this one, come forward. Um, Drew, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of your sins and the gift of a new life. There we go. <laughs> especially uh, committed to uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's uh, through your confession and this wonderful uh, life that you've built that I'm excited to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of your sins and for the gift of, of a new life.
true book. I think I'm glad they made the decision. What do you think? There are words I could get to, but I think that we're ready. We are ready. impactful without you, your presence. So thank you for being here. We'd love to call all the families up uh, to the stage. If you'd like to stand with your loved one as we close in prayer, we'd love for you to put your hands on them and circle up and, uh, and Luke will lead us in a, uh, a word of closing prayer. Teens, you're welcome to come up too. You want? <coughs> Here we go. Here we go. Let's go to our God in prayer. Lord, you are awesome. And let today be a reminder of that. You are an amazing Father to us. Lord, help us to invite our new brothers and sisters into our arms and love them and teach them to be closer with you. Help us to let them teach us to be closer with you. Let us walk in your way each and every day. Lord, we love you. You are awesome. Help them to know that they are now reborn in Christ and that they are children now. And this is not, but, this is not the finish, but this is just the starting line. Lord, we love you. We thank you for our new brothers and sister. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Check, check. 